stormwater report. We have filed uh, the notice of intent with the Conservation Commission today, okay. and the, that meeting will be held on um, March 12th. So this is substantially everything you showed us? Correct. Okay. Yeah, with all the details. Uh, last time we were here, we had the rendering, which is on the front of the page, um, and so forth. But there's really no change. It's done the buildings and phases. The front portion will be phase one, and the rear L will be phase two, as well as the parking. And is this in the, you copied me on an email to the site plan, to the peer review engineer? Yes. This is, these this is are in that. Okay. That's what I sent you. Okay. Yeah, everything we're submitting with Fine. tonight is what part of that we're, we're trying to remember to ask for electronic filings. Yeah, right. Yeah. How far apart is your phase one and phase two? Well, at this point in time, we don't know because they, uh, DESCO is only going to be using a small portion of the building, um, and they are hopeful that they'll get tenants to you know utilize. Mm -hmm. There's three potential tenants that would go in phase two. So hopefully, um, tenants would step forward and they would, you know, build it sooner than not. I will say that uh, on the phase one building, which is the front part of the building, this one right here. Yes, right? Yeah. correct. It's parallel to the street. Um, uh, she, uh, the owner or the applicant, uh, Desco of Desco, is actually negotiating with a tenant right now as we speak, and they, I have requested that if they're going to be part of the immediate occupancy that they should uh, uh, present themselves to this planning board at our public hearing so that you know who they are and uh, they can kind of present a, a little bit of a, a, a document as to you know mm -hmm. what their business uh, uh, is going to be there and everything else um, so I think I, I think that that's predetermined already and Okay. You know, it might be something that who would present to you in the phase two. Um, in the phase two, there's a potential for three, three tenants, but again, it's all it all depends on you know who who wants to go in there, what kind of space they do need, mm -hmm. and everything else too. What is that, Andrea Bordenza? Bordenka? Bordenka relationship to the applicant. She is the CEO of Desco. Uh, which is the the main driver uh, of this building? They would be occupying about half of the phase one uh, portion of the building. Why don't you take this application? Yes. One set of each of the details, the drawings, the drainage report, and everything else, and yes. plans. Yes. And file them with the town clerk. Okay. Okay. And you have a fee. Yeah, the fees right written in there. The fee and the uh, meeting okay. is right on there. Okay. Great. Okay, okay, so um, we can do that with them. Yes. We don't, you don't, you don't, you, we don't take the fee. We don't okay. handle money. We don't, we don't <laughs> handle money. <laughs> they don't handle money. Okay. Um, they don't trust the money, right? Right. Uh, a butter's list is on the back of this one. Oh, John. okay. Like that's the one. original. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, cards. So that's on there. So good. Those are the originals. So why don't you just take one of the other? Yeah. Hi. Oh yeah. Yeah, one of the, the other one, ones. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. There. Right here. Right. Oh, right here. Here it is. Sorry. All right. I'll do that. So I'll take plan and one of these to file tomorrow with the town clerk. Yeah. Big copy, small copy. Yep. And, and the drainage. And the drainage, yeah. Yep. You got the drainage? Yep. You got that. Okay. Yep. Along with the check for the final update. Correct. Right. Yeah, I brought it with me tonight just in case you wanted it, but okay. Yeah. No. But, uh, so we're all set because if you don't file your check, we yeah. start the public here. <laughs> oh, we don't want you to do that. So. Right. What time <coughs> is the meeting being on on the 19th? It'll be on the 19th at 7.15 or so. Yeah, yeah. Yep. okay, great. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the two set associates is going to do the peer review, which they have in documentation by email yeah. today. Well, try, to try to have Deset give us, get us their comments back by the twelfth. Yes. Okay. Yep. So we can that will work. So that we can email them to us. And we can distribute them out. Have, that way we don't get it the day of the, of, the, of the meeting, and especially if there's something wrong. Sure. What does this mean or something? Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Sorry. Well, Thank you very much. The date you get the next year? Three nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll the yeah. Flood plans right in the front. Third Tuesday of March. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hmm. Okay. Noel Nubani? Are you all together? Yes. yes. Okay. And Cyrus, you're all together? Yes. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. Great. So, well, we're in the air. We wanted to, um, we're looking to, we've signed a lease for 207 Russell Street. Um, we're looking to open a. Uh, Anthony Meadows, right across from where the building we've got. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. We're, all right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Where, where, where? Where is it? Right it's next to the right next to the uh, farm stand in between oh, the yeah, area. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and we're husband and wife. Um, I'm becoming a pediatric dentist. My wife's been a general dentist for five years, and we're looking to open an office together. They're going to be. Oh, both dentist and children's doctors. No, together. it's a um, adult and child children dentistry for children. So both adult and children. Oh, okay. So it's a dental office. Oh, it's a dental office. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I only see pediatric patients. Okay. That's, yeah. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. For the so, good ones, it's great. For the other ones, yes, it can well, be a challenge. That's why it's a specialty. <laughs> yes, I can see. Okay. So this is your sign? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How big is the sign on the building? So it says right there, it's to the side. It's, a little, it's written really small, but 154 inches is what we had come up with. And it sits on the square. Where is 100 Oh, it says right up here. It's oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's very small. I apologize. Well, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that 13 inches? Can you read this? 18. Oh. I can't read what that says. Is that 13 or 18? Can I see? Sorry. What's okay? I just wanted to help. Yeah, 13 inches. Um, so that's 13 inches. That's, yep. Okay. 13. So how many square feet? We've got to figure out the square footage. Okay, so what is me by two feet, so that's roughly that's, that's just what's that's on up that'll be on the monument. Oh. That's twenty six and a half. Is that the same place where they do the nails? Yeah, the nails that's, and yeah. the miracle that's, year and the nails. That's in the same building? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is in uh, the other the building on the other side. There's two buildings. Help me. Which side are you on? Up, yeah. Opposite the left side. The left side when you yeah. drive in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How There's big is this? Place? Nothing else in that building. It's 2,200 square feet. feet. Is there anything else in that yeah, building? Yeah. Uh, F45. The uh, fitness place is at the end, mm -hmm. and this will be the other end facing the road. Uh -huh. So the for, for first comment, I want to guess that your sign is too big. So we'll verify that in a second. Okay. Ed Cooper, yeah. Yeah, so Di digital x ray. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be using digital. Well, everybody um, wants to work with sign. So, no, no tanks because it's an aqua for protection. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not going to be processing any film at all. Yeah. Um, we won't be doing amalgams, so silver fillings, we won't do those, but we will have. Uh, an amalgam separator for any patient that had one done somewhere else and needs it changed. <laughs> yeah, just, oh, just those silver Retired. fillings. Retired. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you. Yeah. yeah. So we won't be doing Mostly amalgams. Would you do your training, Holyoke or? I I went to UConn. Yeah. And then right now I'm finishing up my specialty at Columbia. At Columbia. What do you think of Tufts? It's great. It's a joke. <laughs> it's for the I, no. It's for the rich. <laughs> it's, from. it's for the rich dumb kids. That's no. Well, I'm from Cambridge. I went to BU. Yeah. yeah okay. And that's how I met her. Well, I mean, in Boston. Smart. You pay thirty-five instead of one hundred and thirty. Yes. Exactly. Well. Twenty-seven. Oh, I'm way off. You're way under square footage. Yeah, it's way what? Under your way under square footage. Yeah, that that awning isn't too large. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the, no. uh, the no. side of the road, which is not a problem, is only five square feet. You're roughly 
You're under 28 feet square feet. You're allowing 40. Okay. So you're right. Okay. okay. I thought it was going to be more than that by the looks of it. Thank What's you. Yeah. On this, this part here. This is, this, this is already conforming. They're only, this is 8 by 8. So they're going to pick one. They're yeah. going to take one that square, yeah. five and four <laughs> square feet. This whole sign is conforming already. So they're just That's taking, just within, within a conforming sign, they're taking a piece of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's enough room for all the rest of the tenants? Yes. Yeah. 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 So there's yeah. two two spaces to be rented out if we take that space, which we've signed the lease for. Okay. What drew you to the area? So I lived in Amherst a couple of years. I went to UMass, and then um, while we were at UConn, or while I was finishing dental school, and she was doing her residency, or she had finished it, her first job was in Northampton. So we lived in Northampton. Mm -hmm. She Who loved- Who did you work with? I worked with Dr. Tahoon for like six months. Yeah. In Northampton, yeah. and then I moved to Connecticut and started working there. Yeah. So she would love the town, it just, wasn't, wasn't the, the right, right office for her, yeah. so it didn't last too long there. But um, love the area. I, you know, I did my undergrad at UMass. Um, I before I started doing dentistry, I was working with kids. I was associated with the Pelham Elementary School, and um, we've just been moving around a lot. We wanted to choose somewhere to settle down, and I have a lot of family here yeah. in Amherst and. Northampton. Where are you from? I'm from, so I've mainly grown up in Cambridge, Mass. Okay. But I did first and second grade at Crocker Farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then undergrad here. Yeah. And then Yukon is this general area. Yep. It's a little bit of a stretch, but. So. We're still in England. And then I'm in, I'm living in Manhattan right now. Can't oh. wait to get out of the city. <laughs> it's a little too loud for me. <laughs> so that's okay. Can I get an address for you? To for her? Yeah, I think her. So seventy five. Hockenham, H O C K A A K. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Boulevard, apartment six three two six, Vernon, Connecticut, zero six zero six six. Hockenham Boulevard. Yeah. We have a Hockenham Road. Here. Do you? That's yes. that's why the, so usually when I say that, people just stare at me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense. So I was like, how did you guys hear about Hockenham Boulevard? Is it on a river? What's um, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is the zip there? 06066. It's not along the river. It is, there is a Hockenham River there. Hockenham Road. But, but it's not off of it. Oh, okay. yeah. well, there's a hot kind of road. You can go 47 south. Yeah. Bay Road turns into Hawk Lawrence Plain, which turns into Hawk and Elm. Okay. And it runs along the Connecticut River in the know. south. Hawk and Elm means bend in the river. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't know that. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Uh, based on the determination, the proposed work constitutes no external enlargement of the existing floor area. And to approve business use in the aquifer. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Good luck to you guys. Yeah. Sorry, the point was so small. Plan on moving in there? So it takes a long time to build an office, but we're hoping to open September, September 1st. Probably, yeah. Um, Probably really hopefully earlier, September. but part September, October, in time. So you guys, if you guys are looking for a dentist, <laughs> we'll be there. Our kids are all up and grown. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Grandchildren. Who's doing the work? <laughs> Who's doing the dental construction? Uh, Schweitzer. It's a dental specific yeah. GC out of uh, Monson, Mass. So Western, oh, yeah. So yeah. you're doing just children? No, I'm doing the adult dentistry. Um, I didn't specialize, so I just do adult dentistry. He's he's uh, so it's the, the reverse of what most people so expect. So you got you got the whole spectrum covered. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Thank you. <laughs> we thought so too. <laughs> okay.
Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Great. Great. Uh, you can keep I am going to keep. Uh, uh, there's also, I had a copy of the layout. I don't know if you guys wanted that. Yeah, I uh, Not necessarily. Okay. okay. Yeah, I am going to keep the, um, the one that we've noted, and I will. Um, I will attach that as a copy okay. to the letter when it gets out. Thank All you right. very much for your okay. time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good luck, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate right. it. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Scanlon. Yes, I am. You're up. Over here. Just for everybody's information, this is Ryan, Ryan Bill. Bill Scanlon. He is our replacement for Sue uh, Westing of, of the Pioneer Planning Commission, who has moved on to other opportunities. Mm -hmm. And Bill is going to be with us temporarily until the PVPC hires somebody to replace him. That is correct. And so, um, obviously, I can see the beginning meeting where we have to accept this and we can talk about the marijuana bylaw. Mm -hmm. What we really want to get into is MS4. Mm -hmm. And I, from what Susan was telling us, that we, I believe, the PVPC was close on getting the bylaw pulled together for that. We just had a couple of questions mm -hmm. on it. I don't know how much familiar you are with what you feel you've been with stuff. Well, I talked to Patty Gambarini, okay. uh, who was the lead on that aspect of the project. She, I guess it's kind of gotten off track a little bit. Things kind of, you know, <clears throat> not much happened for a couple of months, so she contacted the town administrator. And they've agreed to uh, put their heads together to figure out what else needs to be done to get okay. the project back on track. Okay. So I think in the next week or so, they will either be meeting or talking over the phone okay. about what else needs to be done as, in order to bring that project forward. Okay. Yeah, because we're really talking about the bylaw end of it, the right. zoning bylaw. Cause, and as part of that, the zoning bylaw right now, we have a complete zoning bylaw on the old erosion sediment mm -hmm. control. And we also have a general bylaw on erosion sediment mm -hmm. control. The reason that was done was at the recommendation of PVPC when we put those in, because the zoning bylaw would take effect from this point forward, mm -hmm. and the general bylaw would ensure nobody was grandfathered. Right. Obviously, you know, based on the conditions now, um, the PVPC has recommended that many parts of the zoning bylaw reference the general bylaw, mm -hmm. and we don't make the zoning bylaw quite so lengthy. Okay. A uh, question that I have on that is a zoning bylaw requires two-thirds town meeting approval mm -hmm. to be adopted. Right. A general bylaw requires a simple majority. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in essence, that means we could have a simple majority voting on a general bylaw and changing it, thereby being a zoning bylaw. Or the zoning bylaw doesn't get the two-thirds. Well, no, the, z the zoning bylaw gets two thirds, right. and the general bylaw gets to the majority. Right. A year from now, we make a change to the general bylaw with a simple majority. We are, in a sense, changing the zoning bylaw because the zoning bylaw incorporates the general bylaw. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> well, I think you have to be careful about what you change. Because that, that, that's my concern. Yeah. I don't like that idea. Right. I don't like. I, I have a heartburn with that concept because now fifty percent of the people can change the zoning bylaw. Who's going to be well, the point of the the whole MS four? Was it going to be the select board? No, the DPW. DPW. D, DPW is the general is is the incorporated is, the, is responsible for the general bylaw. The okay. planning board is still responsible for the for the zoning bylaw. But because you reference mm -hmm. each other, it gets very, it could get very complex. Well, yeah, you really, you wouldn't be changing the zoning bylaw. You'd still have to comply with that, but you might have a conflict between the two bylaws. So it might be difficult to figure out what's the right Well, approach. that's right. Do we want to get in conflict with right. the that, that's DPW? That's my concern. Right. Yeah. We want to keep it simple. So, so I think you have to be careful well, when you make the amendments to make sure. Should the town council figure that all out to, to, to make that legal? Well, but, but I, 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 because the PVPC suggested this, I'm wondering if they have an answer to this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't. This was what they recommended. I think. Mm -hmm. Who said the lady's name was? Susan Westa. No. Oh, no. Penny Gambarini. I think. I think right. she was the one that recommended okay. that we do that. Mm -hmm. And 
that's my only, you know, I don't have a problem referencing as mm -hmm. long as things are still mm -hmm. two-thirds for zoning, and I don't want to see a 50% make a zoning change, if you could. Right, sure. Okay, yeah. because there are certain things that were referenced in there, specific rules of the <coughs> specific portion of the zoning bylaw reference that you must comply with this portion of the general bylaw. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, okay. theoretically they should regulate sort of different aspects of the issue. So maybe it's just more yeah. helpful that if you, you find out what the rationale okay. was. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that's a good thought. Part of the background was this didn't, this came in in a fragment, fragmented way. The decree came down from on high that we need to achieve MS4 compliance. Uh, the town had a some grant funding through Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and I guess that might have been Patty who mm -hmm. was involved with that, right. which involved reviewing DPW regulations, the zoning bylaw, the subdivision regulations, mm -hmm. and recommending some change areas. Mm -hmm. um, that was the final report. That was the, the work product produced under the grant. Mm. Um, we asked, I guess it was first Larry Smith, then Susan, and now you, to convert those recommendations into a turnkey document mm -hmm. that we could submit to town meeting. Mm -hmm. And so the gap was, we could, we're using our consulting fund. Mm -hmm to produce the turnkey document right. because the grant didn't produce the turnkey. Okay. That just produced a checklist of things that had to be changed. Right. So um, that's what we're looking for. Okay. It, I believe there's funding available now to continue the MS4 work that Patty was working on. So. Okay. 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 I, I, I believe the town is in a reasonably good shape regarding what the DPW needed to do to comply with MS4. So the general bylaw? Uh, well, the, the, the general state bylaw, okay. whatever. The general state, right. you, have to, you have to look, find your outfalls and okay. document right. them, and you have to do them on GPS sure. mapping and a whole bunch of other okay. stuff. And I believe they've accomplished quite a bit of that from what I understand with the DPW crew. Um, the big gap right now is the general bylaw and the uh, zoning bylaw mm -hmm. to bring them up to date because we have them both. We have the one based on the other. The last MS was MS three, MS two. Oh, it's always been MS four, I think. But okay. yeah, they're okay. Whatever, whatever the, whatever yeah. the last, the last right. MS revision was, they were in compliance with that. But now we want to update them to bring them into the latest MS four. Okay. Why do what, Jim? Why do we have to have a bylaw and a zoning? A bylaw is. Not grandfathered? There's no grandfathering clause in the, the bylaw? The, the problem with the two is I a, can't understand why a zoning bylaw is basically ruled on what was your intent to do these things. And general bylaw has to be very, very specific, exact terms on what you're going to do. There's no generalities in a general bylaw. It's got to be very succinct. Very is there any grandfathering in a, in a general bylaw? No, no there's not. No. It's from the date that it's, it's any so it voted. Would affect anything that's already in existence. If it's out of compliance, it has to be brought into compliance. Yes. Whereas under zoning, there's grandfathering protection, so anything that doesn't conform can remain in existence. Yeah. Uh, so there is a difference between the two in terms of the effect on existing uses. So once this happens into a bylaw, everybody has to comply. For the general bylaw, they do. Yes. Right. So for the zoning bylaw, if they're not in conformance. And what happens if the people voted down? Well, you, I guess we already, have, already have something in place. We already have something in place, so there's there's, there's no loss of anything because then that would just revert back to right. what's in place. We're voting to up we're voting to update our existing erosion and sediment control zoning but we will on the two of them two two separate bylaws, zoning and a general, we'll be voting to upgrade them, update them both. If they fail, then what's on the books right now will just continue to be in effect. Although, Is it more restrictive the updates? Yes. So yes. Less that's why they would say so, right. the, the, the yeah. updates are restricted. That's why the state wants them both updated. So this, well, <coughs> the piece we need to know is if there are penalties for not being compliant. There probably are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you could perhaps mm -hmm. just okay. let us know 
so that we yeah. can tell the people at town meeting what the concept, what the cost okay. will be if they don't. Right. Is, okay. is, it, is this related to the issue of redefining where the hundred year floodplain no, no, is separate. completely different? They're separate. No, this is related to the the eutrophication of Long Island Sound. And what is drainage? Every, everybody, we're all draining. We're all draining bad water into Long Island Sound mm -hmm. via, via the Connecticut River. Because via the, Connecticut the water River. does not run uphill, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, this is all part of. I think it's a basically originally it's a federal requirement yes. that's being imposed on the that's state correct. as owning part of the watershed of the Connecticut River. Yeah, the EPA is in charge of implementing the Clean Water Act, and they're, they've adopted yeah. this MS4 approach. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, this all dates back to the Clean Water, Clean Water Act of whenever that yeah, up until for years and years and years it was, you know, industry and, and business upgrade your act. Suddenly business and industry are pretty much cleaned up a lot, but the towns, the towns and cities are still the biggest, they're now are currently the biggest polluters of the Connecticut River. And that's why Chicopee, Holyoke and Spring, well, about what, Holyoke, Holyoke, Holyoke and Spring, Chicopee and Springfield are spending some big bucks mm -hmm. on separating their um, storm water, storm the water from the from the spring of the right. sewer systems. Right. Yeah, Chicopee, because we at the last meeting for the MS4, <coughs> I think the, the guy from Chicopee said that Chicopee has so far spent roughly $400 million upgrading their water, mm -hmm. and they're about 80% complete, and they think it's going to cost another. 600 million to do the last 20 percent because the first 80 percent was the easy stuff <laughs> whatever that meant right so i will follow up on okay. this conversation and uh, let you know uh, okay. where it stands that's why if you drive through chicken and see all the roads torn up all over the place that's kind of what they're doing in most places and westfield is doing the same thing mm -hmm. well it's like hadley hadley made from get go they set their Two different systems. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what they call urbanized areas, yeah. Yeah. Right. the small hill towns yeah. are exempt. But yeah. Yeah. So have there been any legal challenges, challenges to the problems? EPA in implementing no. these? No. Yes. No, but I don't know that. Yeah. 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 Well, I wouldn't expect any overturning of the program any time soon. Well, the EPA really has overstepped their bounds. I mean, they became, you know, navigable waterways and the streams that drain into the navigable waterways, and all of a sudden. Your downspout, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so there, right. there was some challenges, sure. and they got the wings clipped a little bit, but mm -hmm. well, that's a whole other story. Right. It's still going forward. Yes. Okay. So what we're hoping, because we have town meeting in May, May, right? Was that the first? Uh, the day. It's usually the first Thursday, isn't it? Where's John, John's not here? Could be May 9th. Might be mid month. The, the town meeting might be May 9th. Okay. So we'd like to have the bylaws all set really by April 2nd. Okay. A month ahead of time. Okay. Okay. So it does make for a bit of a crunch, but. Uh, which, which is our first Tuesday, which is our first meeting of April. Wait, what's the date you're putting on there, Jim? April, April 2nd to get all of the. The MS4 and the marijuana bylaws and stuff. So <laughs> then the general bylaws all put product? together. Hmm? Finished product? Yeah. So then you yes. want to have the public hearing then, uh, your first meeting in May? That's pretty yeah. close to town meeting. Yeah, we, we've done that before. That's not a problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, not a, that's not a problem. So on April 2nd, then you would set the, the public hearing date for your first meeting in May? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Sounds good. So if you can get it to us earlier, that I think that would be better. much better. Um, so historically, we have been using the first meeting, first Tuesday of the month for planning. So mm -hmm. PVPC planning. PVPC planning. Okay. Uh, so that would put you down for March 5 for okay. your next visit. Sure. And um, in the interim, uh, you can send anything you've got to me. I'm, okay. I'm planning at HadleyMA.org. It's on the website. Okay. 
So um, and Bill will distribute. I will distribute it. anything to everyone okay. else, um, or we can give you everyone's email addresses. Okay, okay. sure. I'll you know work for you. That that's fine. Yep. Um, How about the, the definitions? Have you um, uh, just uh, finalized that document yet? No, no. Do you no. intend to bring that forward this time meeting? Not this time meeting. We, okay. we won't have time to do that because we've okay. got between a marijuana and MS4 that's going to take right. up everything okay. we have. Right. That's probably going to be a fall town meeting. Topic. Okay. Yeah, there's no point in trying to take on too much. Well, yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty the, the marijuana bylaw is taking up way more time than we thought it was going to take up. Um, but we want to make sure that it's right because there's a lot of unknowns there. So, last town meeting, I think you extended the moratorium until this annual town meeting. Yes. Right. So that is a pretty hard deadline for you. That, that's, a, that, that's a drop dead date. Right. right. And um, so, where do you stand? Are you still making changes to it, or are you ready to go? We're, we Probably. we are. We think we're pretty close. Okay. We got a few, you know, we have a few little typos in there, and a few okay. little. Tonight we'll see how, how many comments are the okay. they, these are the people that are have been religiously coming for the last three or four meetings to talk mm -hmm. about their concerns and voice their concerns and okay. and the farmers and neighbors and we're trying <coughs> to find the middle ground like we said. Mm -hmm. okay. So we started with Susan on that, but it's sort of taken on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. um, I will, I will send you. I don't know if. He was on the list for the latest one. Probably not. Okay, I'll, I'll send you the latest one just okay. so you know where we are. But we've sort of taken, mm -hmm. because it is so uh, so many moving pieces, we've sort of taken that over mm -hmm. uh, right. as a board. Okay, yeah. good. It, it, it was going to drive Susan nuts if she was making all the edits. Okay. But she didn't have to do what she didn't have to do. So. Okay. Um, they, they gave, you gave us the basic groundwork for it, and we can kind of refine a few little points here and there. Right, I know there's a model that yeah. they start with. Right. So. so that's helpful. So then, that, so those would be the two main tasks between now and town meeting is the MS4 and the right. marijuana bylaw. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so with the MS4, there was also a component of changing the subdivision regulations. Okay. So um, you have the most, we worked through that with Larry okay. Smith. So you have the text of our most recent subdivision regulation somewhere okay. in your system. Okay. So the zoning bylaw, the subdivision regulations, and the general bylaw in basically mm -hmm. turnkey form okay. is what we're looking for. Okay. The Mar marijuana bylaw, we've, we've taken over, so you don't have to worry about that, except just to be informed. Okay. okay. Right. And to jump in with anything helpful that you <laughs> okay. make. Yeah. If you, so you see something okay. like, well, that's just that. If you see it as an obvious, you know, flag raiser, let okay. us know. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I'll stick around for that. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Now on to the goodies that everybody's been raising for. Um, we get some general information when it's when, a, when we get through with the marijuana bylaw. So hang around, guys. Don't be in a hurry to leave. Okay, welcome again. We've got the, uh, next we'll talk about the marijuana bylaw. We've made a number of the changes that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, we've broken down the marijuana cultivator from tiers two through six. Two through six is up to 50,000 square feet. Remember I talked about the beginning of the last meeting, how I talked to a marijuana cultivator and a consultant, and he said up to 50,000 square feet this is from Canada again, we just keep that in mind, that they had pretty good controls on odors and everything else. For some reason, when it got above 50,000 square feet, there were lots of concerns and issues. And when it got to 100,000 square feet, they couldn't get good odor control. For whatever reason, we won't get into that. So we've broken down marijuana cultivators, tiers two through six, um, in special, special permit in the business and industrial areas, and the top up to 100,000 square feet only in the industrial. Marijuana cultivator tier one only is an ag residential limited business, uh, local business, business and industrial. Is this grown in the open? Hmm? No, yeah. this is all grown, in, grown inside. Nothing, there's no open grow allowed yet. Um, we want to walk before we run because we, there's a lot of unknowns and 
just to bring John up to date, I had talked to a gentleman, my brother put me in touch with him, who's actual marijuana grower, has been growing it for years, in, about six years in Canada. Yeah, you, you, I was at the meeting when you we're talk, talking okay, about Okay, okay, so you were here, that's good, all right. Okay. So I don't need to repeat that. So tier one, Jim, the square footage is going to be? Up to 5,000. 5,000. 5,000. Okay. And the tiers are actually the reference, the, that's the state regulation reference. Everybody's, I think everybody's aware of that. And um, some of the general things that we did, we, uh, uh, okay, physical requirements. Did, but, but, oh, so, somebody brought up one of the last, I think the last meeting about uh, noise. So I put in to, oh yeah, 30.4.2.10, noise. No marijuana cultivation facility shall allow any noise to be emitted from its facility greater than 75 decibel dBA. Such noise levels shall be measured at the cultivation facility's boundary lines. Just for information of what that means. I'm speaking louder than 75 dBA, or maybe at the top, maybe it might be a little more, just about 75. Normal speaking is between 65 and 75, depending on obviously how loud you are. So if somebody's a football field away, and that puts you the 300 feet buffer zone from the facility's boundaries to a residence, residence's property line, chances of being able to hear much if it's 75 decibels at the boundary or less, you're probably not going to be hearing them at your residence over 300 feet away or it's going to be so muted that it won't bother you. And that's the whole intent here. Not that it'd be so much dead silent as much as it's not annoying to you. Okay, so um, I think that's a reasonable number both from the cultivation facilities number um, and also from the any butter that's that far away it should be very manageable. And there is an instrument to measure that exact decibel. Yes. I don't, yeah, uh, you can measure it. You can, it's actually measured. It is, it is truly measurable. No, so just yeah. nobody's going to complain without. That's right. If they complain, yes. yes. yes you, and they're very simple instruments. They're, they're calibrated, they're well known, of everything else. It's not something that's, you know, a, a, magic, a magic item. I think, in fact, I think Tim has one of those, a DOS meter, yeah. DOS meter, whatever it's called. Um, DOS meter for radiation. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just a decibel meter. Decibel meter. Okay. And other than that, we made a few little, you know, there's a few little type built. What? You said you had a car. Yeah, on the, on, on just at the beginning, 30.1, the last line. It's got natural and build environment of the town. Build can't oh. be right. 30 point The very front page. The very front, very front page. page. Up next page. Sure. Natural and built. Should, built. Should built. B U I L T. Okay. And then uh, 30.4.4.4. We've said that they have to get back to the zoning enforcement officer within 24 hours. I said, how about one business day? 30.4.4.4. You know, they could, oh, okay. he, he could call them on the Friday afternoon and you can't get back to them 24 hours. Okay, that, that makes day. sense. Okay. That's good. No, the, the co-op, what is the true definition of a co-op? Or micro businesses or whatever? Um, What's that? People join together on a partial? Co-op is... Co-op, a marijuana cultivator comprised of residents of the Commonwealth and organized as a limited liability company. Limited liability partnership or cooperative cooperation under the laws of the Commonwealth. A cooperative is licensed to cultivate, obtain, manufacture, process, package, and brand cannabis or marijuana product to transport marijuana to establishments but not to consumers. Can that co-op, if you're only allowed so much uh, square footage, would a co-op, could they triple that by different people on the same parcel? E, there is a... 
There is wording in here that was put in to try to negate that. Let me find out where it is. No marijuana retailer or tier one cultivator shall be located on a parcel which is within 300 feet of the property line to the nearest point of the property line where the marijuana tier re re marijuana retailer or cultivator. In other words, you can't be within 300 feet of a marijuana cultivator to a marijuana cultivator. So yes, you can have more than one cultivator on a property, but they've got to be 300 feet apart. Mm -hmm. So you can't flood. 5,000 square foot buildings right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's and that ends up 300 feet away from the residents and everything Correct. else. Yes. Okay. That was not good. Who suggested that? But that was a good suggestion. They must have been it. Mr. Adams. Was that it? <laughs> we were trying to figure out how to address that one. There's a few things in here that I, I, I see I forgot a few typos as well. Um, but there were a couple of comments that have nothing to do with really the residences but uh it was put forward and i didn't com i only put in to the changes the things that we agreed at our last meeting there's some other comments that i've received since then that weren't put in because we didn't talk about them we didn't agree to them so i don't want to just change the bylaw without being sure that the planning board was agreeable to them and that was about op uh applications bill remember that one that was the way the bylaw is written. You can't apply for a town cultivator or retailer license, a permit, until you've received state approval. State approval, state says you can't apply for a state license until you've received local approval. Perfect. So, therefore, it's an interesting condition. So, what we're going to change it to. Is that you apply for the two, two you, we allow to apply for the two permits simultaneously. Okay, just so everybody knows. Uh, so if they apply, it's one gets the permit first and who's first and who's second. They can apply, but if somebody doesn't take any action or what? We can have the public hearing. We can grant approval conditional on getting a state getting license. a state license. Right. And that takes care of that. Yes, yeah, should do. That should that'll take care yeah. of that. Yeah. And I suppose if the state's moving faster than we are, they can grant. Well, conditions. what I look at is the person coming in. They're spending all kinds of money to get to that point, and if they get one and not the other. Yeah. Well, I don't think. What the, would be more important to get the state permit first versus the town permit? What the state has said, you can't get a state permit until you receive local applied for a local approval. Okay, not necessarily that you have to receive, but at least you have to apply for local approval. So we, you know, it puts them into a tough situation if we tell them you can't do this before you do that, and the state is opposite of us. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it a point where you can't. You neither one would works. So we're going to allow them to do both at the same simultaneously, but we can also let them decide. Let them decide on the pace. Right. If they want to ask us, they're going to file with us, but they want to hold off on a public hearing until they know, get a better idea whether the state's okay with them. They can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's only two retailers going to be allowed in town. Um, one is probably going to be. The medical that was approved several years ago, but they haven't done anything. Thought it was happening with them. Yeah, I think there's special permits coming up for labs. Be three, three years. The three I'll have years to, to check when. That's going to be close. Yeah. The 20-year um, age is that applicable to drone and everything that to deal with marijuana? 20 years. 21 years old. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, you've got to be so 21. So a farmer, <clears throat> if he's grown it, he can't hire anybody under 21 years old? Oh, oh, to work for them. Right. I don't know that. That's correct. What's that? That's correct. So nobody can work, nobody under, nobody under 21 can work in marijuana facility correct. or well, cultivation? Correct. You have to be over the age of 21. Okay. And you are? I'm Julia. Bill oh, Bill okay. You're Bill. Julia, Julia Germain. Yes. Okay. Speaking from experience. Okay. 
and that is germane to this question, right? Good girl. Oh, good to meet you. Okay. Um, have, you talk, have you talked to Ms. Germain about why we're a little bit, uh, what, the reason we're not allowing larger than 5,000 square foot to begin with is concerns of the neighbors and the bad information that's circulating. We don't know what's true and what's not true. Our goal, our goal is, I mean, talking to some growers, um, one to be exact only so far, and you get slanted opinions. So what our intention is not to say 5,000 square feet forever. We're fully anticipating within a year or two coming back to town meeting and probably changing the size of the facilities based on real information and facts from surrounding areas that are nearby that are growing the stuff. Does it really smell? How bad does it really smell? Is it controllable? Is it a problem? Right now, you read California, oh my God, the whole world stinks. You talk to Canada, yeah, it's not so bad. You talk to other people and you get everything in between. What's the real truth? And so rather than being, it's much easier to be restrictive and more, a lot um, less restrictive down the road than to be um, wide open now and try to restrict it down the road. And that's coming from a lot of experience and those are facts. So, you know, that's why we're doing what we're doing. We're starting small and then after we have some experience, some other areas, but there's some growers that are going to be growing very locally within the next 12 to 18 months. You know, we'll find out from there. And what we've been invited to a place that's already growing it in Rhode Island um, to come down to there that's doing some growing and see what their facilities are like. And I would, um, can, I, can I speak now? Sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a head cold. I'm feeling terrible. Um, stay, I just, stay right yeah, there. Yeah, I'll stay right there. <laughs> right. Um, I'm happy to offer my perspective on, you know, a number of issues. I think what my goal in talking to Bill and others on the planning board is we're looking, um, we were approached by a property owner here um, who has an operational greenhouse and it's in a limited business zone um, with really very few residential neighbors, all of whom would be amenable to his um, goal, which is to convert the use to cannabis. Um, it's probably around 50,000 gross square feet and we would simply be converting an existing operational greenhouse um, in a limited business zone. Uh, I don't foresee any negative impacts. Um, I agree with you, odor control is an issue and the larger scale, the greater the concentration, that can be a challenge. So I guess my, you know, having read the most recent version um, of the bylaw, I think that cap of tier six would make sense in the limited business or for, you know, I don't want to use the term grandfather, um, but for existing, operational production greenhouses or similar properties um, to, to operate at a slightly larger scale. I think um, the challenge with tier one is that it is not really economically viable. Um, I, I speak my experience, I'm the director of corporate development for Temescal Wellness. We have uh, nine campus facilities across uh, three states um, and eight different, sorry, nine different municipalities. Um, and we have been operating medical here in Massachusetts since last year. We just opened our recreational cultivation and manufacturing in Worcester. Uh, we opened our recreational dispensary or adult use in uh, Pittsfield. We'll open Hudson next week and then Framingham for both medical and recreational leaders. What type of financial analysis do you do to determine if something is economically viable? Uh, we are, um, our CEO, we, we do extensive cost modeling um, and planning. I've been in the industry. Are you doing cash flow analysis or internal rates of return? Absolutely. I mean, all of it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a vertically integrated business. Um, I'm not the chief financial officer. Our CEO comes from Wharton and has a very traditional background. What do they know? What, what, what do they exactly. know? So, I mean, and all of our estimates, you know, we, we all say <laughs> estimates are wrong. But what type, of, what what type of internal rate of return is one of your uh, greenhouses have? <laughs> Uh, we don't operate greenhouses currently. Um, but you said you did economic analysis. What's, what's your hurdle rate? 
Twenty percent, twenty-five percent. Well, oh, these are relevant questions. These are relevant questions. These, these are neat things for Mike to know. But you, 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 just, told, you just told guy. me that a small, a small, smaller facility oh. is it economically viable, and I wanted to know how you decide that. We look at the market, so what other operators are building, um, and we look at our our long-term supply, and we're talking five, ten, fifteen years. Um, so the market is moving towards larger commercial scale greenhouse models, especially with the energy restrictions. So you see, um, you know, now that we're not in a vertically integrated market, in order to compete with larger operators, you have to operate in an economy of scale. And the capital expenditure to build a 5,000 square foot facility, wow. including security and simply forming the business and professional services, there's a real economy of scale. So you're going to spend as much to build 5,000 square feet when you could build you know, 10, 15, 20. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a supporter and a proponent of cannabis for economic revitalization and for better utilizing some of the resources that, that Massachusetts has, including um, underperforming greenhouses uh, here in this part of the state, um, you know, the workforce, the trained labor, the tradition of agriculture. And so I don't want to see, you know, obviously we're interested in partnering with this operator who wants to convert a facility because we want to expand our production. But I also would hate to see um, smaller operators make that investment. Um, once you grow the flower, that's a six month production cycle. And if it doesn't pass testing, you're out you know, six figures. And so the, the, um, the sort of downside to investing in an operation that small um, is a little bit scary to me when you look at the potential upside and you're trying to compete with larger scale operators even potentially within the same market in the in the town of Hadley. I was told today that the black market for marijuana in Northampton is alive and well. I and think they, that, that, that people are, are not going to this facility on Pleasant Street as they were because they can get a lot, lot cheaper from their local dealer. Yeah, and that's why we're looking to drive that economy of scale up because then the cost of the consumer comes down. Um, the most recent statistic I read is that about 75% of the marijuana sales this year in Massachusetts will be to the black market compared with 93% last year. So it's going down, but it's going to be, the black market will be driven down by more cost-effective economical operations. Um, and those, I, I'm definitely supportive of small scale, um, small economies of cannabis, but I think in order to create the most opportunity for business owners in Hadley and for property owners, um, expanding that limited business to include at least tier six um, is going to be it's just going to create more opportunity um, for, for the existing businesses. So I did speak with the property owner today, and he indicated that he was mostly interested in the medical side of things. And we have a separate medical marijuana bylaw, which does not address tears, yeah. because tears are part of the Cannabis Control Commission. Correct. Um, so what we what I didn't know, and he of course didn't have any idea, was whether you can have whether you can grow both for the medical market and for the adult market in the same facility. The answer is yes. He he actually explained this to me. This is where it gets confusing. Uh, the Cannabis Control Commission now regulates medical as well as adult use. There is no cap on medical marijuana cultivation. However, that is a vertically integrated program. So if you want to cultivate medical marijuana, you cannot sell that to the adult use market and you must also have a brick and mortar retail store. So a medical marijuana cultivator um, has to do both retail <coughs> and cultivation. Uh, it does not have a cap, but I will say there is no additional market, you know, by my analysis for medical marijuana. Um, as an as a existing operator, we probably just, be, you know, we recently started selling recreational or adult use in Pittsfield. It's, Pittsfield's not a great example because it's um, not, not a lot of people there, but where we were seeing 10 to 15 medical patients a day, we're seeing three to 600 adult use consumers a day. So the demand for medical, or sorry, for adult use is well, far above and beyond. Is, is the price cheaper for medical marijuana it's than the same? The same? It's the exact same. Yeah, we don't change our pricing, but adult use consumers pay 
up to 20% sales tax, including that local 3%. Yes. The, another thing so it seems like uh, everybody is talking about where, what location are we talking about? Uh, it's in a it's in a limited business. The owner is he's not uh, he's ill tonight, so he couldn't. Well, it doesn't. It's irrelevant. Well, it's it, irrelevant. It does. No, it's irrelevant. No, at this point. It, it, yes, it I'm is. sorry. For it cons, do, for it cons. does matter for yeah. the people in the audience. One of the big objections was a large greenhouse in a limited business district that glows red but for about eight to ten miles. That was the big objection. So if we're talking but about the we, same we, facility, we've addressed it. No, we, 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 we have addressed it. Ma 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 marijuana will be grown in a dark to the sky facility. Yeah. So it, whatever's out there doesn't matter. If it's, a green, if it's a greenhouse, it will at night. It will. We be know that. And does Julie know that? Yeah. We. Well, we will not why, go why are you being such a proponent if you know you're not going to change our minds? I, she, I doesn't know that. she doesn't know that. She doesn't know that. She does it. She's trying to change her mind. She's trying hard. She's trying hard. Yes. It's, it's, a free, okay. it's a free speech. Do you happen to live by one of these growers or sellers or anything? Uh, I moved to Worcester to manage the construction project. Uh, we did a renovation of, a, of an existing warehouse yeah. uh, for cannabis cultivation now. Um, I don't believe there are any operational hybrid greenhouses. We call them hybrid greenhouses. They're um, opaque siding <coughs> up to around eight feet. Um, and it would actually drastically reduce the light pollution compared with what um, the, the red LEDs. We don't use that. No, no, light. He's using red light. But with, and lights in general, the whole idea is it'll be a blackened greenhouse at night. There'll be no light coming out of it. So that if you're. We don't do those long overnight photo periods, anyways. You don't know, you would, again, the, the long, it's, it's, it's irrelevant, long or short, at night there is no light coming out of this greenhouse. That's the, the whole bylaw. I mean, it's, you know, I'm sure you know what a black, black and style green, a dark, what do they call it, dark, dark light greenhouse or whatever, where it's, it's enclosed at night and you can't see out of it. During the day, if you want to use sunlight, that's fine. You open it up, <coughs> however that process goes, and at night any light is not seen. The greenhouses that we believe you're talking about, I live eight miles away. And at certain nights of the year, I can see the light in the sky from those greenhouses. So if you live nearby, you can just imagine how your area is lit up. And that's what we want to avoid with the greenhouse. One of the two big concerns of the greenhouse is, if it's not a black and style, is you know the light pollution at night, and the odors. Um, you know, obviously traffic and but I believe traffic and stuff is minor for those things. There's not a lot of traffic to yeah, them. Yeah, there's no major deliveries. I, I, would, I guess I um, would ask then about the special permitting process. We have, uh, Tennis Falls are in six special permits across the state already for our current operations. So we've been through, um, you know, those conditioned requirements. Um, so I guess in, in the interest of preserving optionality, and for um, you know current businesses and current landowners, would the special permit granting authority? I think that ZBA would uh, planning Land board. board um, ZBA's variances. Um, planning board. Um, well, the, either either board can grant special permits. In this particular case, it's the planning board for the cultivation facility. Understood. Um, so I, I guess. I would implore the board to consider that special permit granting authority as the opportunity to put conditions, limitations, especially things like light pollution. And it's going to really be driven by each specific location. Um, so, you know, we're interested in a property where the neighbors have already signaled that they're not oppositional to it, um, especially considering the improvements that we're going to make. Um, to the existing operation. It's not our job to improve the economics of a, of a yeah. business. What's what your job to yeah. uh, determine yeah. how you want to do it? Yeah. Well, the, the whole thing of, of, of light pollution is that whether there's zero neighbors within three miles or surrounded, we want zero light pollution at night. We want the whole, this whole thing with the whole dark sky. We want the dark sky. But I guess going back to what my concern is, which is the tier allowances in light business, does that matter whether it's 5,000 square feet new construction or you know, 60,000 to 50,000 square feet of canopy? I'm not sure where the size restriction plays into 
plays into well, that. If, if it's not canvas control, what is not canvas right now, it would be treated as a new operation. It gets because back, not, there's no grandfathering. It gets back to okay. the, it gets, gets back to the purpose of the bylaw, which says the basic purpose is the well-being and to mitigate against undue impacts on the natural and built environment of the town. That's yeah. why it's in there. Like, like I said, we're we're dealing with the unknown. Um, if you could, you say you're growing at a Massachusetts right now and other areas near, not that, that far away. If you could give us some addresses, is it be, has to be active? I would have to tour all of you through our production facility in Worcester. It's not, it's not a greenhouse, but just to get a it, sense of what. Yeah, and, 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 that, and a, a green, I mean, whether it's a greenhouse or a building, from my point of view, other than the, the greenhouse or the closed building, really it has to do with the light. The odor is going to be there, which is probably a bigger concern than the light, because the light is relatively easy to control, to be honest, I believe. It's really the odor, and how do you control the odor? What is the odors outside versus inside? I would love to take a tour of a facility that's, you know, larger facility to see what it's like and really get a sense when it's in bloom, um, what is it like? What what, what is the, what are the environmental conditions around there? Yeah, I'll shoot you an email and you know send that in. And we're happy to have you know. Okay. It's, we're, it's we're hard gonna, to this gentleman's had his hand up for a while. Uh, over on Southwest Cutoff, it's in an industrial yes. zone. So, yes. So you say the op wait a minute. Excuse me. This gentleman's had his hand. I recognized him. My name is John Washkowitz. I have farmland on Rocky Hill, and I guess my question would be. Um, how do you control uh, hemp, hmm. the odor of uh, hemp? I could uh, have a field of hemp, and um, all I need is signs <coughs> saying that it's uh, industrial hemp, and uh, there's still smell, uh, there's still odor coming from those nubs. It's the same thing, just uh, no THC under uh, 0.3. So I guess uh, my question to you is how would I um, maintain a, a field of hemp um, Hemp is hemp. I'm not going to be an expert here, so I'm just going to make a few general comments. What I understand, hemp is extremely low odor compared to marijuana. Okay, we're not comparing apples to apples. But it's also considered. I, I'm, I'm making a broad guess here because I don't know beans about either one. Only for what I have heard and what I've read. Marijuana. I mean, hemp was grown in Hadley. Waitley and Granby this summer, as far as I know. The hemp's agricultural. I'm marijuana just, growing is uh, it's the same plant, manufacturing. Uh, and another thing, um, she's so right about uh, the numbers on uh, actually the investments to uh, start up and get running for a cannabis grow. Um, maybe for ag res, just um, higher tiers rather than just a tier one, um, just to make sure that uh, investments come back. Um, if there's no smell, if there's no lights coming out of a greenhouse, um, what would uh, be the difference to having just a bigger greenhouse or two greenhouses? Um, I'm just not... Like I said at the beginning of the meeting, I said before, we're dealing with the unknown. We don't want to be allow everything and find out, oops, that was a mistake. We want to start small. I'll repeat myself. You may be back here a year from now and saying, okay, you know, it's really controllable, it works well. If you do this and this and this, you can have a 20 or 20, 35,000 square foot greenhouse. To say that we're going to allow that off the get at the beginning, I am absolutely against it. Okay? I mean, and I'm, I'm not trying to put the farmer down, it's, it's just it's dealing with what we don't know. I guess it's but starting small, um, you're letting. Uh, the industrial growers go all the way to a max tier. Um, it's, I mean, I guess it's just very imbalanced from going from max to uh, all the way to the lowest tier uh, for just ag res farmers. Um, so you tell me, what if we vote to do something that's wrong? How the heck do we undo it? For me to be precautious and you say a year from this thing being voted, come back and renew it. Look at it. Once this town is damaged, go ahead, try to correct it then. So my take is I'm going to be very cautious about this. People from all over, from not from this town, come in and comments. They can comment all they want. All these people that are getting paid 
to push this to make you're making money on it. Well, that's what they do. I do what I have to do to protect the people in this community, and that's what I intend to do. And it's be very careful what we do and how we do. Since we've had our last meeting, I've actually talked to, I've only ever talked to one grower, and that was the comments I made a while ago. Since then, I've talked to several people that are, lack of a better word, consultants in the marijuana industry, marijuana industry, and they were telling me all the different great things marijuana can do, how it does this, how it does that, and they said, you know, there's a lot of facts out there. And I said, well, what about these controls? And they've all said, we don't deal with the growing. We only deal with really the, the marketing, the selling, and everything else. And I said, well, I need to talk to, you know, the actual hands-on people that are doing the growing to get the information. And they said, we can put you in touch with some. Well, I've only talked to one. This lady, I would absolutely love to go to visit one of your facilities or two and see what it's really like because are, are they blooming? Would they, would they be blooming? Are you always blooming? Correct. Yep. Okay. So we cultivate and manufacture. Uh, we have about 18,500 gross square feet. Our Worcester production facility is tier two, so up to 10,000 square feet of canopy. Um, and that's why we're looking to expand our, our canopy production. Okay. Our, you know, where, where in Worcester is it? Uh, right on Southwest Cutoff, sort of industrial. Um, and we actually do very little in right now in the way of odor control simply because we don't have an odor problem. Um, our, our production director, who I'd be happy to introduce you to, um, he came from DuPont and was their um, director of sort of industrial scale greenhouses, acres and acres and acres of greenhouses. Um, so we have, <laughs> we have queued up a really extensive odor control plan where we can sort of do stepwise multiple different levels and layers of odor control. Um, as you know, this gentleman mentioned, the, the capital expenditure is, it's extreme, you know, and I, my concern for limiting and really by, by creating this zone and saying, yes, you can grow 5,000 square feet here, you're implicitly in encouraging that, and I would hate to see, um, I just hate to see the fail, I hate to see failure um, for something that, that potentiates so much positive impact for a community. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of ways to respond to uh, what to Mr. Waskevitz is saying, but I, I would say just one thing is the larger the facility you put in in a neighborhood, the more it impacts our property values. The, you know, it decreases our property values to have a larger facility as compared to a smaller one. So that's just one one economic impact. Okay. And, and that's, that's an opinion. That's, there's no facts there to be honest. I do. I can share some good, there's some early, the Boston Globe just did a recent uh, survey of existing research on property values. We're seeing actually positive signs around residences, so I think I'll share that out. <coughs> the biggest thing about the thing with the production of property values, I'm going to make a broad brush here. No, no offense to anybody or no good things to anybody. If the facility, other than being seen, if there's no impacts, noise, traffic, um, odor, and the rest, then the chance of being negative impacting on the, uh, that's like putting a tobacco barn up. If there's no obvious issues with it, then the chance of impacting your property value is little. And that's what we're trying to get here, is getting a facility that is designed and put up to really be, except for a visual, I see it, nobody really bought minds that it's there. And that's our goal here from both the growers and the property, the, the abutting property owner's point of view. We don't want to impact you negatively and ultimately, I agree, probably up front, it's not going to be very economical viable. Hopefully once we get some information and real facts and experience, now it's a lot better for everybody. Yes, sir. Um, Mike Lupario, I just wanted to ask a quick question um, sure. about the amending process. Um, say we do go through this one-year trial with uh, with Tier One in the Ag Res District, and um, you know uh, there are no complaints, things go smoothly. Uh, what does that amendment process look like? Does it require us as farmers to start like a grassroots campaign and go all the way up to try to plant like have a town meeting, or do we 
What is that going to look like? There, there's, there's two, there's two problems. Basically, two basic processes. One is to do an amendment by, um, petition. by petition. Actually, there's three. I take that back. One is like an amendment by petition, where you actually bring something to the planning board, to the to the uh, town clerk, and say we want to change this. Um, the problem with that is you bring the amendment in. We do not have authority, like say the amendment says we want to do this and this, but there's wording problems. We can't change, we don't have authority to change the wording in that state law. Um, the other way, another way is the planning board says, hey, you know, we've got some, we've, we've been to these facilities, we have seen this and we've experienced this. It's really not that bad. We should now allow a larger facility. So we take the initiative or you take the initiative. A better initiative, a best best solution is you come in to see us at one of our planning board meetings and says, "Hey, we would like to do this." You, the farmer, and the property a buddy property owners, and us work together again to simply make some changes to the bylaw so that we get something that we've worked on and is good for everybody. Okay, um, I fully anticipate within a year or two. I'm not exactly sure a year that we'll have experience from neighboring towns growing it um, and facilities. What I really want to see is some open grow. I mean, you're not going to find anybody open growing it now until really this summer. There are some open grows around. Um, if you've got to try, I, mean, I don't mind traveling, except the town won't pay for it. But uh, there's, there's in, you know, wherever I can find a reasonable open grow, if there's something within a reasonable area, I would certainly love to go and see it when it's in bloom to find out how bad is an open grow. Um, I'm trying to get a hold of a grower in California that open grows five acres. But I'm having a tough time having him contact me back. I've got his phone number and I'm trying to get a hold of him. And <clears throat> he's in, I don't know if we're in California, but this would be ideal because California is where you hear all the horror stories about the area. It's like a big skunk farm. Well, okay. That's the newspaper and that's the internet. What is the real truth? Is it, you know, I don't know. That's why I want to talk to this. this bottom, gentleman. bottom line, it has to go to, back to town meeting. Yes. No, no matter what, it's going to be a two thirds vote at town meeting. But the way to get to town meeting, like I said, either petitioned by you or the planning board taking initiative or us working together to come up with something. Is there a way to include a clause in the bylaws that would maybe uh, promote that type of a, a discussion? Or is that something where? Th that's written in a roundup from people who are interested. Th that's written in mass general laws. That's written in state law that, 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 that how, how to do that. Okay. okay. We can't put clauses into that I'm aware of because you can't put a clause into a bylaw. It's hard fact, hard yes or no. Okay. Yeah, no, it just seems like a lot of work from a you know farmer standpoint. You know, juggling all the plates throughout the year, then having to petition your own interest. Uh, you know, at the end of the year to, to change that's something that's as small as it. That, that's why I would promote that. This fall, come back to talk to us, and you know, without going through a whole bunch of rigmarole on your guys' part, having to draw up a bunch of bylaws. Hey, what do you think? If, or, or give find some places maybe locally within, you know, three or four hundred miles that might be open growing, um, and that you know, so that we can go out there and see it while it's actually in bloom. If you know of anybody open growing this summer, okay. If you find, if you hear somebody within, you know, three or four hundred miles, which is not a, for, to me, that's not an unreasonable road trip. I would love to drive three or four hundred miles and put in the stuff that's in bloom and really smell it. You know, is there a, how bad is it? Is there an odor? Kind we of can thing? take a trip to Worcester, too. So well, I, mean, I intend to take this lady what, up and go see some in, in, a, in a factory. Cut what? Southwest cut off, right off exit 11 of the pike. First, smell it. Southwest, Southwest uh, Cutoff. SW. Southwest Cutoff. Okay, that's the industrial park there? Uh, it's an uh, industrial yeah, area. Just, yeah, so yeah, a lot of heavy equipment, that's, um, that's manufacturers, um, that should be a, landscaping companies, just contractors. So as you get off the pipe yeah, of 290, is it there or is it in the industrial area off Shrewsbury Street? No, no, it's right It's right off uh, It's right off exit 11. Right. When you take a left, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. because and there's an industrial to area in Shrewsbury. Yeah, I'd like to make one one general comment, Jim. I think we're on the right track. Uh, we've got to tread lightly 
there's a certain euphoria that marijuana is wonderful, it's wonderful for society, it's going to cure everything from, you know, crooked teeth to fallen arches. But <laughs> the, the same euphoria is about solar panels and windmills. The town of Falmouth, Mass, uh, was going to make a lot of money by putting two large windmills up. Well, they're losing their shirt. The neighbors are really upset at the noise. The whoosh, whoosh, whoosh is much, much louder than they anticipated. So people were oversold about how wonderful and how great this is. That's why we have, I think, a certain responsibility to go cautiously. So let's see how it goes. I mean, the, a great example, Falmouth Mass, just, just follow it online and you can see the how upset the neighbors are, and they're legitimately suing the town, so there are a lot of legal expenses, they're not getting the money that they thought they were going to get from the generations to sell it off to the grid, so that's just a little example. Other comments from the audience? Just one other comment on the document so far, 30.4.3.1. Marijuana establishments are encouraged to utilize existing vacant buildings where possible. Isn't that kind of just an editorial comment? Is that, is that really necessary? Well, that was the <coughs> medical marijuana the state was encouraging to be do, done in industrial we, areas. We've got that in other places, in, in the uh, senior housing district, mm -hmm. to allow and encourage to use existing, re renovate existing stuff otherwise, too. So it's, yeah, it's, it is an editorial comment, but it's, it's more than editorial. It, it's guidance, yeah, you know. You know, another thing, too, today I had the opportunity to talk to the police chief about the bond on this. Who determines the cost of a bond? And the the police me, chief did for the medical. But also, what if something goes south on recreational? Who disposes it? And I asked him, he said, well, the state police and all this. And he says, there's a police chief that's quite knowledgeable on this. And I says, could you find out all about this? And how do they set a fee of disposing marijuana? By the stock? By the ton? Or the square footage? Or what? We shouldn't be guessing on it. They, you know. No, chief Mason gave us a number. On the adult, on the medical marijuana dispensary, but yeah. he doesn't know on this. But not, not for the cultivation facility, you're right. Well, not no, because we don't have anything in front of us when we actually get an application. But what I'm saying, I would rather have the information long before that, because so the applicant knows up front before they invest all kinds of money. There's another part of this. And to do it now would be, as far as I'm concerned, the right time to get this information so we have this someplace. Well, it's right here in the bylaw that there will be a bond. Yeah. So but the, how much? But, but we, but we, 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 you're on, it is going to be a moving target based on size and other things. So we, you know, we're simply saying we have a bond between the I know. What did, I want to know what the other things are. Well, I don't think it's being substantial. Inflation. The last time we had to get rid of the marijuana field was uh, a corn chopper. No, that's you can't do yeah. that. Yeah. Why can't you do it? Because they won't. I can uh, I can speak to what we've done with the commission. So at the state application level, that bond for unwinding essentially is a required part. You have to show evidence of that, um, either a bond or an escrow account to cover that in the event the business shuts down the dis the proper disposal. So the commission actually requires at the state level that bond to be in place or the bond or the, the escrow account. The uh, state does that? Correct, yes. So we don't have to do that? I, I don't want to advise you either way, but I will say that that is part of the state application process. Um, in our case, we I think our escrow account is $5,000 per license. So for cultivation and manufacturing, we have $5,000, a total of ten in an escrow account. Um, because the, the state police, I don't believe, would be able to handle and dispose of the cannabis in compliance with the state regulations. It would have to be done through the laboratory or someone else that's licensed specifically for that handling. 
um, but that is what the state, just for a ballpark for reference, that's what the state has accepted. And in so the far. state regs, is there a formula for how they calculate that? No. Okay. There's not. So but that's, that's what they've accepted. So what, what percentage of the state market is your Wharton CEO want to control or supply? What's that? What, what percentage of the market in Massachusetts does your Wharton CEO want to supply? You've got a big facility in Worcester. Where else do you have a facility? Uh, our, our facility in Worcester is small by comparison. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, at the time when we started, um, the market in 20, the real estate market, the number of willing landlords, the program was very nascent. So we knew this will this will not be big enough. If we are lucky enough to get adult use approval for our three dispensaries, we know that this isn't big enough. Um, so we already supplement with the wholesale agreements with other licensed suppliers. Um, so we're you know we're not looking to control any you know we don't have goals for control of the market. We're uh, you know we're building businesses. We're hiring a lot of people and seeing a lot of you know lot of success in that so we don't have explicit goals for that I probably shouldn't have said he went to ward and I guess that's snotty but uh, you know we're we're really focused on you know we're, we're really focused on like fiscal responsibility because you know we pay 70% subsidized health care where we pay like well above minimum wage for even entry-level positions so you know it's it's a big opportunity and we're trying to do it right and I do think that, you know, even the planning board has an obligation to local business owners and local landowners to give them an opportunity to participate. So if we say, all right, well, the only, lar the only uh, districts viable for large-scale operation are industrial, that means, you know, large-scale investment, um, likely not, you know, a local business operator, because they would have already done it by now. Um, so I think... It would be a shame to limit participation by, you know, your key stakeholders, the landowners. This is time for me to make my editorial comment. Zoning is that delicate balance between the rights of the people who own the land and who want to start a business and the rights of the individuals or the community next to it. So you can't tilt the scales in one direction or the other. It is a delicate balance. So no, that's why these people position. are here. and yeah. and. There was a lot more in previous meetings, so it is a delicate balance, and that's what we have to wrestle with. Well, Absolutely. What would, it, what would it do to the economics of in, indoor grow if we allowed a farmer to say grow 50 acres of marijuana, 10 times that, you know, 500 acres open grow? Uh, we, you know, we we would buy it wholesale, and we would drive prices down for our consumers, uh -huh. you know, for, for our guests and our retail facilities. So, you know, we're just speaking about this company specifically, we're, we're flexible and we're, you know, having to adapt to the market as it changes also. Um, we, we were hoping by this point, the re one of the reasons we didn't max out and buy a massive facility is because we were controlling cash, making sure it was viable, and we were hoping that some of these larger scale operators, you've probably been hearing about American and Freetown, a million square feet for five years. We were hoping some of them would be online and operating, but it is so hard to get up and running and operational and to get through your first production cycle that are, you know, yes, they are competitors to us, but they are also our, our so they're an important part of our supply chain. Um, so we would just as soon open more retail facilities than so, make that So you've basically practice. got vertical integration here going on, right? Yes. Are you aware of any open grow facilities within New England? Um, not for marijuana, medical marijuana, or you know, marijuana cultivation. As these guys mentioned, there are there are open hemp grows. Yeah. Um, I don't know of any that are operational now. I have a friend who's starting one in Coal Rain, but it'll be not until next yeah. growing season. I, I heard that Truro grow, Truro on the Cape wanted to do some open grow, but I don't know whatever happened with any of that. Yeah, I think it's a challenge. It's not something I would probably recommend to our production team simply because the growing cycle is so short. But if you're looking to utilize, you know, agricultural land, it's it's an excellent use of that. You know, whether it's hemp or whether it's medical or adult use marijuana, um, it's a great way to optimize and to really utilize land better. Um, so I, I think it's- well, What do you eat? What's that? What do you eat? What do I eat? 
If you're going to use, utilize the land for growing pot, what are you going to oh, yeah. I'm, I'm making a joke. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you're going to eat cannabis. Well, you can actually juice cannabis. It has excellent health benefits, but it's hard to find the biomass. <laughs> is it, so, is it FDA? so this actually does raise another concern, sort of the other side of the spectrum. You, you don't want to get into a situation like you do with, say, taxi medallions or liquor licenses that people say, hey, I just invested a million dollars. You can't undercut me by... Yeah. Ex by letting letting farmers grow to tier three, four, five, six. Um, so that that's something just to keep in the back of your mind. It's a business decision, and uh, well, it, it should yeah, be. Yeah, and, I, and I think, as, as Dr. Zagrodnik said, that everybody has dollar dollar signs in their eyes. And when the economics of this thing really plays out, it's not going to be as profitable as uh, everybody thinks in the long run. Anything else on this? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to check on the status of um, 30.4.3.4 at the last meeting. You wait, were wait, wait, wait. Okay. 30.4.3.4. Yes, 300 feet is the number we're going to stay with. Okay, because you were discussing the possibility of 350. Yeah. It's 300 feet from the residential property line. And we've changed that so that originally it was... Uh, I didn't change it. Okay, we're going to, we were going to change that so that any subdivision... Oh yeah, I don't, we have changed it. For purpose of this section, unimproved lot is any subdivision on record with the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds shall constitute a residential dwelling. We took out the words at time of uh, this bylaw so that, let's say, just use the future, three years from now, um, somebody puts a subdivision in and next door is an open field, no marijuana facility. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I just wondered where okay. you were at with the 350 okay. or 300. So, so, so that I'll get back to you. You're growing marijuana. No, no, we're, no, no we're, we're not growing marijuana. No, the person you're just saying. No, but there's no marijuana being grown in this area. Somebody puts a residential subdivision in and gets it approved. Now, if somebody wants to put a marijuana facility in, they have to be 300 feet away from those property lines. What comes first? What second? If the, if if, 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 if the marijuana facility is there, their grandfather. Mm -hmm. And somebody puts a subdivision in, they're knowingly putting a subdivision in buyer beware. within a marijuana facility. So it's exactly that's buyer beware. If there's no marijuana facility and a subdivision goes in, and now somebody wants to put a facility in, they have to be 300 feet away. So it's not like if the facility is there and a subdivision goes in, the marijuana facility goes bye-bye. No. Marijuana facility is grandfathered. And the grandfather and is on a say somebody does um, a subdivision plan. Okay. Once it's filed with the registry of deeds. All right. So through this whole process and expense of a landowner or somewhere doing a uh, doing a presentation to the planning board, and here comes this marijuana guy. You know, and then all, that guy loses all his investment or all his money? No, because the um, filing of the preliminary plan grant, uh, locks it in. On the subdivision? On the yes. subdivision. Yes. All right, okay. So yes. that's yep, yep. Filing a preliminary plan. I thought I read, read in here that it's filed with the Registry of Deeds, not filed... But it, would, it would relate back to the filing with the planning board. Yes. Some some things get approved by us, and they never get recorded in the registry of deeds. But, but it, shouldn't that say in the in the bylaw? That's actually in the state law uh, of the state subdivision regulations. Yeah, just you know, I mean, some people are not going to be looking at all this stuff. I mean, if they're looking at the, the marijuana bylaw. That stuff is there, and now they know. So, quick question: What's the corporate structure? Are you considered a craft marijuana cooperative, or no? No, it would just be a um, whatever tier 
marijuana, sorry, cultivation marijuana establishment. But how are, how are you operating? What's, what legal structure does your business? Oh, Temescal? Uh, Temescal is a Massachusetts LLC. Massachusetts, okay. We're headquartered in Friend. Okay, so I will make the few editorial changes that we goofed up, I missed, I missed on, that were noted to us today. And we've got a few comments about that we talked about. The uh, application with the state and local have to be um, coincidental as opposed to separate because that's just going to be a disaster. And uh, I believe a couple of things that Mike pointed out. And we are probably pretty much good to go. With Yes, sir. Um, I submitted a proposed amendment last time for the uh, to prevent the modification of lots and uh, lot lines. And we talked about you know trying to prevent someone from coming and taking a large parcel and subdividing it just for the purposes of growing marijuana. Yes. Um, and I think you guys said you had to check what the legality of my proposal was um, potentially. Um, uh, you know I don't know where we're at on that. I, Joe Bard, had been tied up uh, when I did try to reach him. I didn't try to reach him again. I, I guess I'm still thinking that if it can be divided for any other purpose. I, I saw a lot of problems with your, with your recommendation because Central. you were specifically saying you cannot subdivide a parcel for marijuana. You cannot subdivide a parcel. And I believe that's contrary to state law that says you can subdivide a parcel if it meets zoning requirements. And your, and your proposal would say you can't subdivide a parcel, even though it meets zoning requirements. I don't think that's possible. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm sure my language wasn't perfect. Well, I, I know, but we're relying on your language because you're, 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 you're the attorney to give us the bylaw as opposed to do that. If we, we, the words we have put in prior to that was a, a cultivator cannot be within 300 feet of another cultivator. That's a pretty good, I mean, you're going to have to have a pretty good sized parcel um, to do that. And if you have something that's that big and still meet the bylaw and still be 300 feet away from a residential property line, then that's probably not too much of a problem. I don't want to say it's not a problem, but I doubt it's going to be anything serious if you've got something that big. Okay. And again, that's something that down the road we may find out if things are... You know, if it's built properly and controlled properly, it may not be something that's even, we might even have to, we want to reduce that amount or take it out entirely. We don't know. What we don't want to do is, we don't want to have these, like John said, stack 10 next to each other. I is, think that's what we're trying to get, avoid. Is there anything irrelevant to a flood overlay district? They've got to comply. Um, they're putting a structure in the flood overlay district. They have to comply with... The flood, the, flood flood requirements. the flood requirements. It's got to be flood proof or flood resistant, however the wording is, because they're not going to put a facility in that's going to be growing this stuff and get floating downstream. That's an awful big investment to say bye bye to. Mm -hmm. um, so, anything else? Okay. If not, I will update the bylaw and get it out to everybody. And we might be scheduling a public, a public, right now, my plan is to schedule a public hearing on the bylaw on March 5th, one month from today. Well, one, yeah, one month from today, so that we get it in and we get the uh, bylaw locked in as far as. As long as you publish in the newspaper, we'll, we'll double check that. Yeah, we'll publish it. In, I'll publish it in the newspaper. And we'll hold a public. We've got to hold a public hearing. I know, but we can we can move maybe move it out to like April second or something, as long as we have published. That, oh, okay, that locks it. I believe you don't have to publish the whole text. No, no, we just got to publish the notice. It right. just has to be published in the newspaper. But I, I'll. It's it's got to be a minimum of twice before two, tw a minimum of two weeks before the public hearing. So we could we publish it in February and hold a public hearing in March. Sure. April? I don't think there's a maximum. How do we deal with uh, Joe? Do you happen to know if there's a maximum? On yeah. yeah. How so do we deal with Joe Bard's comment? Last time, the uh, some underling took over and 
So yes. I've been feeding it. Joel ha Joel has a copy of this drug. Okay. Good. Okay. And. Uh, but uh, oh. yeah, well, I'll double check with Joel. Okay, but if, if, if we can do that, that'd be fine. If we can put a legal notice in in February, in February, and schedule for public, let me know a public hearing in April, then we should be able to cover, and, and we just make a generic mention that okay. MS4 compliance as okay. well. Just one thing about the drafts: if we could just put a date on the draft as to when it was created, because oh yeah, it, gets, it is it in the confused. title of the. It's in, it's in the title of the Bible. It's not printed on the doc, the doc document itself. Okay. All, all of the yeah, all the titles have a date on it. When do you figure this thing is all going to be cleaned up and ready for that hearing? Um, I'm hoping to have this cleaned up and ready by March 5th. And what are you going to do with this fence that, that's going to be on the internet and everything for it? It's going to be sent out to everybody that's on my mailing, which is which is probably about. 60 people, 70 okay. people. Okay, is, is it going to be posted on the website? We have a new website. Don't know how to post on the I website. I do. You do? I do. Okay. All right. I went to the went to the okay. training. Oh, okay. Okay. But that's fine. You got that. But is it going to be posted on the website? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Once that's we get to good. a final draft, yeah. uh, we just have to convert it to a PDF document and we should be able to post it. Is the final before the hearing or after the hearing? Be before. We can publish it. it. As soon as we have a final draft, we can publish it. Right. Uh, we can, you know, maybe, we do have a public hearing at our next meeting, but uh, we can discuss it. Right. Well, I, I, I certainly would like to see that posted before that public hearing. That way, not just the people that put their name in here, but anybody that goes on that web page can look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Did, did you say that the um, town meeting is the first Thursday, which would be May second? I believe, John. John. Yes. It, <laughs> is the town meeting the first Thursday of May? Do you know? I don't. You don't. Okay. No. We think it is, okay. but we're not one hundred percent sure. 2nd. It's, it's normally the first Thursday in May, but they have sometimes moved it around for various reasons. Okay. Well, they got to coordinate with the school and everything else. Right? Yeah. So the, the public hearing needs to be how at least how far in advance of the town meeting? One day. Oh, there's, there's no there's no, there is no minimum. Okay. It can be a day. It can be no more than six months. Well, the only problem is that you have to recommend approval. But, right. Of the bylaw. Yes, we know that. It's within 21 days. Of yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it would be like a month before, at least. Then. No, you know, it doesn't have to. If we're prepared to make a recommendation one way or the other, we could literally do it the day before. We we have had the public hearings on the Tuesday before the Thursday. Yeah. So um, in the in the fall town meeting that we just had. We held the public hearing on Tuesday. The town meeting was on Thursday. Okay. So the only limitation is the legal notice has to be in the paper a minimum number of days before the public hearing. But apart from that, um, and, and no more than six months, public hearing can't be more than, what, six months six, in advance? Six months prior to the, to the, to the town meeting. So um, we're, we're definitely within range. We'll, but we'll probably aim for an April um, public hearing. <clears throat> it really, at this point, it becomes almost a formality uh, because we've this process we've been going through is much more effective than the public hearing. You know, the public hearing <clears throat> if, often just turns into people opposed to a bylaw rehearsing their arguments. The uh, I mean, typically at a public hearing, it's too late to really make too many changes because everything is pretty much finalized because of the time frame. We've been working on this now with you for well since I think November, and we've made you know some some good things for everybody, depending on your point of view, obviously. And uh, but I think we come up with a document that at least can is workable for the time being, and obviously from the farmer's point of view and a cultivator's point of view. The proposed cultivators um, 
likely to be changed in the not too distant future based on real facts and that's what we really want to get to is real facts and uh, you know you're concerned with no odors no lights no negative effects and that's all and if the cultivator can do that and except for I said, like having a physical facility then you know there's no harm no foul there I, I certainly like to see that it's it is said that we're gonna definitely re review this in its entirety in, in 12 months of the acceptance of this uh, regulations that way people know that it, we're still we have our ears and eyes open on it so people have their comments in between that time they can contact us yeah we can make a motion at the public hearing for example to schedule a discussion of the impact of the bylaw nine months out or something like mm -hmm. that yeah. we just can't build it into the bylaw as uh, no to, but to we, you know, just so the people know yeah. 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 we can do that, that. We, can, we can vote to schedule we're open to this we can vote to schedule a review for a specific date at a no at a future meeting. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. You have Julie, you have my email. Okay. Because I definitely want to visit some of your facilities. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with you. Yeah. Um, yes, I will. Yes. Oh, thank you. I was joking with you. I got an MBA from Wharton, class of 75. Mm -hmm. I've lost that, my that, sense that's, of humor. That's, that's, that's before computers. Yeah. I've lost okay. my sense of humor. <laughs> He's a well firm man. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, uh, we're, you like being in Massachusetts. I come from like an agriculture family also, and I just wanted nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I grew up on a farm, family farms. Lived in the town most of my life, and just like don't want to make mistakes. No, I, I don't envy your position, I know it's complicated, yeah. so you know, I appreciate you guys listening. All right, okay, have a good night. Okay, some general information um, the proposal for the move prior to some stuff that happened last week. So, we'll, we'll go with what was this, and then we can quickly talk about what they have put the proposal. <coughs> Excuse me, they're going to move the planning board office from where we have today to the second floor of the town meeting at the top of the stairs. Town hall. Top, yeah, top of the stairs of town hall. Um, at the first office is the north. That's the old north, co county office. That, I was, I was, is that, was that the old old county yeah, office? Mary Fitch is there. Okay. The uh, top, second floor, northwest corner. And um, Tim has kind of made a lay, layout. That, um, is that is that room going to handle everything we have in there? Did you look at it? Yes, it'll handle. We have ten filing cabinets and one legal, and then we have six extra filing cabinets, including our computer, our scanner, and our large file. This will handle probably everything, but maybe three of the filing cabinets that are empty. And I've already told Tim, don't throw them out. We got all those cabinets for free. They're in really good shape. If you don't want to store, pay the storage fee, I'll store them at my house for the next two years. I got, I've got enough room to store them. Okay, because they're empty filing cabinets. And uh, he's going to lay a fi those filing cabinets empty. Why can't you lay an empty cabinet horizontal on top of those other cabinets in that room? They're heavy. Two guys can pick them up. That's yeah, but it, well, we can. That's an idea. We can look at that too. You know, okay. Um, that's only a storage room, so I mean, it, yes, it's what it is. So, but anyways, it will. It'll. It. Everything will fit into that. Pretty much everything will fit into them, except for some of the filing cabinets. Is that going to be a permanent move, or is that a temporary move? They don't know. I asked that question. Good question. Yes, I asked that question. I'm, I think they've got another meeting tomorrow to talk about the move at 10 o'clock in the morning in the town hall. So when is this going to happen, Brian? 
that's I'm going to talk about this one too. Before this, they demolished this building. Yes, before they demolished this building. Yo. Now, the original plan was to move, start moving us out at early March, in middle of February. However, the move was supposed to cost, it's estimated to cost about, I think it was $80,000 including rent. Um, because the, when they moved the senior center out and they're going to put them in the, whole, the uh, Most Holy Redeemer Parish Hall, mm -hmm. they're going to pay rent over there. And because they pay rent, that, that, tax, that property becomes taxable, so they're going to reimburse them for the taxes as well. Whatever. The church's property becomes taxable because you're now getting profit out of it. But you're renting it to the town. But that, you're, that, it's, 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 it, not, however, how, we're not going to get into what, why okay. or what. I'm just making comment. You can you can go discuss why or whatever with somebody. No, let's talk about. about the planning board. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole cost of all of these moves were estimated to be about eighty thousand or eighty six thousand dollars, whatever it was. And the senior, no, the library had originally agreed to pay for something like twenty-six thousand. And then they went to the library and says, because we're speeding up the schedule, we would like you to pay for the entire eighty thousand, or whatever the total cost was. The board of trustees met and says they don't want to pay for the extra cost. So therefore, the town, the senior center doesn't have the money to pay for the move. So if they can't pay for this move to save the extra money, then we probably won't be moving for a year. That last part is in limbo. Out of here, another year? We may be here. If, if, in other words, if they don't speed up this construction schedule like they had just thought they could because the cost of the move, then they're going to go forward with the first plan, which was the library. The senior center gets built. Then this building gets demolished. And a new place and built. Guess what? They're going to pay that in the cost of construction. Increase. Well, so that, that's something that right. that's something they're dealing with for the building that's committee. Okay, agenda. I'm just making information only. That is on the select board agenda for tomorrow night. Right. That'll be resolved tomorrow, I believe. Okay. So, you know, it, it's out of our hands. Like, like I'm just making a general comment that the, when we move. They don't know if it's going to be permanent or otherwise. Well, as long as those home. records are not in a storage bin somewhere where no. they could turn mold or some this, other this, stuff. They'll be very, fully accessible as needed. And our meetings will be held in the meeting room? In a second in the town hall meeting room during the, in that duration, yes. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be, we'll have it open for a Tuesday night? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go make the, we'll go, once they decide what we're going to do, we used to have a sign-up sheet in the room. I had to sign up at the beginning of every year, every first and third Tuesday for the whole year. So, well, I mean, that, that already, did you talk to him about that? I talked with Jennifer, and she has taken over. Uh, she's abolished the calendar on the wall. Okay. All, all reservations for the use of the second floor meeting room. And there's going to be a second meeting room there, too, where the Board of Health, the outer... Uh, of the Board of Health office, the outer okay. space of the Board of Health office for smaller groups. But uh, Jennifer is taking over scheduling for the second floor conference room, and the select board and the planning board will have priority. Okay. Okay. And that is all the general information I have. Okay. What about our budget? Is that complete? And did this board vote on level funded? Level funded. Where where is that budget? Do you have it there? What do we have? What do we have? And I talked to Nixon and I talked to Bill about it about hiring someone to do our minutes at a meeting and bring everything yep. up to. So I talked to Jennifer, and she is going to get me information. Apparently, there are people who make a business out of transcribing meeting minutes from, from the tape, which is on, online now. So she's going to get me some names. Um, we do have money in our budget for support. I think it's $2,000. Mm -hmm. And we have the... I five think it's 5000 And then we have the, con okay, and then we have the contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, which we but probably are not going to get through 
in its entirety this year. Right, but you're putting your budget together for the for the upcoming year. Are we going to have money in that budget to hire someone to take care of these minutes for this upcoming year in that budget or not? I believe we will, because we're not we're not we're contracting with someone. I want to be very clear: we are not hiring anyone. We will not have a planning board employee. It don't have to be. I mean, this. Uh, I use a person in Northampton. I drop something off. They type everything off. Boom, done. Right. So that's what we're going to be exploring. Right. You're not paying no benefits, no nothing. Right. Exactly. I just want to be very clear that everyone understands that. Yes. <clears throat> but I look at, at it this way. You get a business to run. I understand. That's why and, I, and after this, after we spoke today, I <clears throat> spoke to Jennifer at town hall mm -hmm. specifically about it, and she is going to get me some names of people we can talk to. And she gave me a uh, a price estimate that uh, she suggested that seventeen dollars an hour seems to be well, the going rate. I would like to make a motion to authorize you not come back to this board to authorize you to just do what you have to do to get the job done and get all these minutes up to date and so they stay on here so they don't infringe on on your work or your business <coughs> that's that's not fair what is the legal requirement for minutes You have to, because I got a thing from the attorney general about that. Because when the I would like to see the senior senator because every me. committee it wants to talk about hiring a secretary now because, but the there is I don't know if there is a requirement for minutes. There is, yes. like there, is a, there is a requirement that mi minutes be taken. Okay, how voluminous do they have to be? They have to basically state. Um, the general topics that were discussed, yeah. definitely any motions that were made and the votes that were taken. Okay. And discussion Plus, about how that vote come to be well, in general. Not not necessarily. You've got this. No. No, it, they have to be written. No. They have to be written. Well, I'd, I'd like to see all of that because everybody speculates. Well, we're so online. See, attorney, no, 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 it's attorney, attorney General. Joe, is Joe, Joe, Joe. Yeah. it's on. It's, it, 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 there is a state law that says got, that gives you general copy. requirements of meeting minutes. Right, I get a it's, copy. It, it's online. You can, we can find okay. it for you, okay? And it's just like we said. It has to be written and it has, they have to ultimately be approved by the board. It's like, like someone comes from out of town that wants to see some minutes pertaining to something, they have a right for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, not, it's a public meeting, not for the, for the red, red thing, for all the public. Yeah. And we have to comply with it as long, along with every other elected and appointed committees or yeah. boards. And if we don't comply, what are the sanctions? That, and so I'll look it up. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll look okay. it up. Uh, okay. Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. I mean, I want to make a motion. Oh, okay. What was your motion? My motion is to allow Bill uh, Bill Dwyer, our, our clerk, to negotiate and hire someone to, to contract for what, whatever, to get bring all the minutes up to date and what it from the future on. I'd like to make an amendment to that motion. I'd like to have Bill. Look into it, but not negotiate until authorized by yeah. the board. No, no, we've been looking in. I've been talking about this for a year. Bull, bull. Why don't you take them and do them? Well, I mean, I, I could second. Right. I, I could, how, how, I, how I, could I could second that motion only if Bill is willing to accept that responsibility. I'm going to tell you something. You guys keep playing around. I'm going to file a complaint with the attorney general against this board. How's that grab you? I want to comply, and then I want nobody do you have a attacking. Don't have any problem. Okay. Uh, now, second. do you want to do it for the future meeting, or just to bring him up to date? And then, wait, 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 let me ask a question. It's up to him if he can't handle it on the future dates. All of you. It rests on Bill. I'm not going to tell him he's going to do something and infringe on his business. Well, what, I, what I'll do is uh, I will. Uh, I'll proceed if I think it's reasonable. 
if if I get an un, what I consider to be an unreasonable quote or response, um, I'll come back. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to come back? But what is reasonable to you at your rate? That. So, it, so then let him come back, and we can find out if we agree it's unreasonable or not. Okay. It's that simple. I may be able to, depending on what, what Jennifer, inf what information Jennifer can get to me, uh, may have an answer for okay. two weeks from now. So okay. has the vote been taken? Or just wait, wait, we got a motion. Mike seconded second it. No. Yep. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Good. Good. That's a good start in, in the right direction. <laughs> must be all healed. <laughs> Not yet. You haven't He's seen getting, nothing yet. Getting the warm, how many, how getting many, the warm how, many, how many oxys did you pop before you came here? <laughs> okay. Anything else? Nothing. You all set, you all set John, for yeah. that? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. So moved. So moved. All in favor? <coughs> all right. Meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs>